With fixed point binary, as you should already know, we store the binary number like we would with a normal decimal number. Okay, It looks exactly the same in terms of the format of it. So let's say, for example, we are looking at the number 8.75. Then, as I covered in the fixed point binary video, we store the 8 like this, like normal. We put the point and we store the 75 like this because that represents 0.5 and that represents 0.25. With a slightly more complex number, so 6.63, we store the 6 in the same way, so 110. Um, and this 0.63, we can figure out how to store that by doing uh, 0 0.63 times 2 equals 1.26. Okay, so we know the first number is a 1. 0 0.26 times 2 equals 0 0.52 so we know the second number is a 0 and then we've got 0 0.52 times 2 equals 1.04 so now we know we've got a 1 and if we only had 4 decimal if we only had 4 places after the point okay which would be decided in the um, processor of the computer what we were going to assign uh, then we'd have that as our last place so we would put 0 0.04 times 2 or times 2 which is 0 0.08 so we'd have our four numbers there okay however there is another way that we can do this this point here can move left or right and we can what we call normalize it by moving it to the same place every time. The processor would make a decision based on what the number looks like and uh, what rules have been agreed when building that processor with how we're going to store or where we're going to store this point. That is called floating point. Okay, let's have a look at that first number again. Actually, firstly, let's have a look at uh, a decimal number. Okay, 18.29. Now the scientific notation for this number is 18.29 times 10 to the power of 0. What that means 10 to the power of 0 is 1, so it's 18.29 times 1 which is 18.29. However, we can move this point here. If we move it this way, so we can have 1.829, we'd multiply it by 10 to the power of 1. If we moved it the other way, so 182.9, we would multiply it by 10 to the power of minus 1. And if we put 0 0.1829, we would multiply it by 10 to the power of 2. The thing that moves up, depending on where the decimal place is, is the exponent. Okay? This part of the number is the mantissa. Okay? This is the mantissa, so we'll call this M. This part of the no number here is the base, or the radix, so which we'll call, uh, we'll call it R. And this part of the number here is the exponent E. Okay? So, every time we move that point, okay, then E changes. It's important that we understand how that works to move into looking at decimal numbers. So let's go back to that first number that we had, 8.75, 8.75, okay? So 8.75, we said that it looked like this, 1000.11. Zero, 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 one, one. The reason being that this is the 8 and this is the 0.75 because in um, fixed point binary, we figure out these by having that one represent 0 0.5, that one represent 0 0.25, then 0 0.125, and they just keep dividing by 2 along that way. To move this into floating point binary instead of fixed point binary, what we're going to do is instead of storing the number like this, we're going to store the mantissa, okay? We're going to store the base, which I've called R because it's also called the uh, radix or the radix, and we're going to store the exponent, okay? So instead of storing this point and this point here, we're going to store three different parts. We don't really need to look at this one here because this is always a 2. 
Because we're using a base 2 number system, this must always be a 2, and therefore we're going to get rid of any reference to the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to store the mantissa and the exponent. Okay. What a processor might decide to do is normalize this number, turn it into normalized floating point by floating this decimal point down this way. Now with that previous decimal number that we looked at, we could see that every single time we moved this point over here, the exponent changed. And it's exactly the same with floating point binary. If I move this 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put a 0 there to show that it's going to be a positive number, then we have moved the number 1, 2, 3, 4. So our exponent must be 4. Then we store the mantis as 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, multiplied by the base, which was 2 to the power of 4. I know that I'm mixing up notations here. This is a, I'm mixing up number systems. This is a, a binary number, and these, at the moment, we've got them as decimals. So we're going to move that. The exponent is 4, and the base was 2. OK? So we've got this number here times uh, 2 to the power of 4. OK? So if we move that back, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, all we need to do is take the exponent number and move the decimal place along here that many times. So we have an exponent of 4, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see that we have put it back from floating point to fixed point binary. Let's have a look at one more example. So let's take the number as we did before, which was 6.63. With 6.63, we said that this here was the part before the point, and the part after the point that we worked out was 1010. To convert that into normalized floating point, we're going to float this that way, and we're going to add an exponent value. Okay, so this is going to be our mantissa over here, and our exponent value is over here. The base, which I haven't written, is a constant as long as we're using binary it will be 2 so we float this 1 2 3 okay so now we've got this number here and we've moved the decimal point so our mantissa we can write in is 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 and the amount of spaces we moved it is 1, 2, 3. So our exponent is 3. Just to make sure that that works, we can use our reverse method to convert it back, which would be that we would take the decimal point from here, and we would move it 1, 2, 3. And of course, there we have 1, 2, 4 which is 6, and here we've got uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.125, which is 6.625. And obviously, because of the method we used here and the limitation we placed on the part after the, after the point, we lost a little bit of precision. Um, if you understand floating fixed point binary anyway, and if you look at that video that I did on fixed point binary, then it explains exactly why we lose that precision there. But that proves that it works. Okay, so one more time just to make sure we absolutely have this. Let's say 7 point, uh, 
0.25. So our 7 is 1, 1, 1, and our 0 0.25 is 0, 1. Okay? We're going to store this as floating point, so we're going to have our mantissa and our exponent. We're going to shift that 1 to 3 and put a 0 there to represent that it is a positive number. And we're going to go 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 is our mantissa. And our exponent, we said we went 1, 2, 3, and our exponent is 3. Okay, so this is how the binary number would be stored in the computer if we used normalized floating point.